As you might expect from a legend like Barbra Streisand, she has a legendary mansion to match. This singer and actress hails from New York, but these days resides on the west coast in an exclusive Malibu neighborhood. Her estate is made up of multiple properties and even boasts features like its own shopping mall. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Barbara Streisand or Babs as she's known to her nearest and dearest is an American singer, songwriter and actor from Brooklyn, New York. Her career began in her teenage years when she took to singing at local nightclubs and worked her way up to several guest appearances on television series like The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. And you're so good that I, I hate you. <laughs> I really hate you. You're so Following her breakout role in the feature film Funny Girl, Streisand would become a global superstar. Shortly thereafter, she would also go on to become one of the most successful artists in history when she'd produce close to a dozen top 10 albums and win multiple Grammy Awards. Okay. Barbara Streisand. All of these accomplishments helped Babs bag a net worth estimated to be in the astounding $400 million range. And guess what? Damn near a quarter of that worth is wrapped up in Barbara's real estate compound located in Southern California. Located in Malibu's Point Doom neighborhood, this jaw-dropping estate not only consists of three parcels of land acquired over several years, but also includes, and I promise you, I'm not kidding, its very own mall. Either of you met Barbara Streisand and been to her underground mall? Of her um, second home. Yes. and on her property, and it was a uh, lovely. Hey guys, it's Kara, back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment, and today we're checking out where Barbara Streisand calls home, and trust me, it's a beachside paradise. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. Barbara's love affair with her gigantic compound began in 1984. That's when she first glimpsed the main house on the property, which was located not far from a ranch she was living in at the time. Believe it or not, but when Babs offered to buy the house from its then occupants, they told her straight up, no way. So what did she do? Well, she wound up buying the two adjacent properties and simply waited out the other couple. When those two owners eventually split from one another about 10 years later, Babs swooped in and finally got her hands on the property property she wanted all along. In terms of the exterior, the back of the home is painted white and faces a breathtaking stretch of oceanfront. Meanwhile, the front of the home is painted red and the surrounding exterior boasts extensive gardens with 100 rose bushes as well as dahlias and snapdragons. Soon after moving in, Barbara came up with what she calls the script for her new family home and its construction. What she imagined was this, a post-colonial family settled onto the property in 1790, where they soon built a mill to ground their wheat. Once the family began to prosper, they built their farmhouse, which was added onto substantially in 1904. I mean, I've heard about actors creating a backstory for their characters before, but for the house in which they live, Babs definitely took that idea to a whole new level. All in all, the compound contains 47,000 square feet of space that includes the following buildings. A a rustic mill house with a 14 foot high, 4,000 pound water wheel. There's also a building referred to as grandma's house, which is basically just a cozy guest cottage filled to the brim with quilts. Then there's the main house, a 10,500 square foot elegant white mansion featuring eight bedrooms and something like 11 bathrooms. The heart of the property is definitely the giant U-shaped barn flanked by a stone silo. Inside this space, a two-tiered central room leads to a show house collection of period settings. A lounge, a library, a luscious office, a bathroom, a room dedicated to napping, and yes, the long rumored about shopping mall. Don't worry, we're gonna circle back to that soon. Despite the fact that Barbara has spent years of her life perfecting all these spaces with endless antique hunting, not to mention scouring the world for authentic and properly sourced materials that fit in naturally, only ever sleeps inside the main house. When speaking with Harper's Bazaar about her routine, she told them that she and her husband James Brolin 
treat the barn like a B&B, &B, as if we went away for the weekend, but we don't have to drive, they're art projects. That's not to say she doesn't love to show off what she's created. Babs even invites her famous Hollywood friends over for a guided two hour tour, precisely mapped out by the starlet herself. In fact, she told Harper's Bazaar that the last actor to take her up on the offer was actually Jennifer Aniston. And while Barbara might be in charge of most of the house, that doesn't mean her hubby doesn't have his own special space as well. James not only has his own office, a bathroom, and a workshop, but the couple recently expanded during the pandemic and they turned a tiny concrete block house on the property into a screening room. When it came time to decorate her home, Babs not only found the room for her eight Grammys, two Oscars, eight Golden Globes, and three Emmys, she also filled it with a whole bunch of prestigious and expensive expensive items of decoration. For instance, she bought masterpiece paintings by artists like Gustav Stickley, Charles and Henry Green, as well as Charles Rennie Mackintosh. To, to do a house in only two color streams, looking into the period, into, in the, into the 20s and the 30s, and while Babs has been pretty careful when it comes to making sure that pictures of the interior of her home are hard to come by, the few that she shared with Architectural Digest give us a taste. Like for instance, the living room, which includes a fireplace embellished by an arrangement of stainless steel decorative panels that were once part of the landmark Art Deco Richfield building in downtown LA. Throughout most of the home, Babs has utilized only four colors, burgundy, rose, black, and gray. A color palette that extends even to the kitchen, where the tile work complements the pinstripes on the cabinet. As for her bedroom, while well, the carpeting was copied from a 1930s Bicolo original that Babs once saw inside the Huntington Hotel in San Francisco. It also involves what she calls a swan motif, with the stuffed ceiling cut into curved shapes on one side and geometric shapes on the other. And what might be the only departure from the home's overall aesthetic, the powder room located on the first floor utilizes patterns in deco style light fixtures. And then there's also a bar room that was converted from a garage and overlooks the lushly landscaped rear garden and swimming pool. I know what you guys want to hear about, Bab's one of a kind home shopping mall. Located in the basement of the Streisand family barn is a cobblestone paved antique lantern lit facade street that's meant to resemble a turn of the last century style shopping district. And it's not just a shop or two, it's an entire fleet of them. Want to fill yourself with licorice, frozen yogurt, or popcorn? Then head over to the sweet shop. There's also an antique shop, clothes shop, and a doll shop. And if Babs ever needs to pick up a small gift for someone else, she just walks into her own gift shop to pick up a soap dish or a pair of candlesticks. The only thing that's missing? Cash registers, because why would she even need them? The shopping center has come together over a period of years and involved a lot of careful research on Babs' part. After a trip to the legendary decorative arts museum, Winterher, located in Delaware, she became fascinated with 19th century shops. She told Harper's Bazaar, Seeing Winterher's indoor street, I thought how ingenious that was. Instead of just storing my things in the basement, I can make a street of shops and display them. So after filming Wrapped on Meet the Fockers in 2004, Barbara asked the production designer on the film to lend her a few set pieces as opposed to simply destroying them. Out of all the shops located down there, it's the antique clothes shop that's the real gem. This store is basically a museum dedicated to the star's most famous costumes over the years, including the infamous gown from Funny Girl made of green chiffon over pink silk. Barbara's shopping mall would even inspire a playwright named Jonathan Tollins to create a stage piece in which an inspiring actor is offered the job to work in Streisand's basement mall, called Buyer and Seller. Famous and talented and litigious as Barbara Streisand. Jonathan came up with the idea after checking out Babs' book, My Passion for Design, which offers hundreds of photographs that document the creation of her dream house. Unfortunately, if you want to see most of them, you're going to have to buy that book. As for what else we learned in it, well, according to Barbara, she and James spend most of the morning in bed, and the very first thing she does is reach over for her laptop and begin trading stocks. Seriously, 
She doesn't even want some coffee first. That must be how you earn yourself a $400 million empire and wind up living in a colonial village of your own. Well, when you're as accomplished as Barbara Streisand, you can live your life however you want. Well, that'll bring this Barbara Streisand house tour to a close. What did you guys think of her incredible compound? What was your favorite feature? Her mini shopping mall or another one of those well thought out luxuries on the property? We can't forget those ocean views either. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.